I just woke up and fresh out of the oven, I saw on Twitter a new developer message, and I didn't even skim through it because it's so fresh, I want to I wanna just read it through here and uh, be surprised as we read, hopefully, with good stuff. New develop dev message number 53, and um, yeah, in the previous dev message, they're talking about New Year's, blah, blah, blah. I hope they talk about Nice the Apocalypse. I'm assuming they're going to talk about Nice the Apocalypse. This is like the thing now that people are going to be uh, waiting for since it's already been revealed that it's coming. About the 2023 update plan. If you missed um, the video that they put out, I did react to it. They are talking about 2023 being them going back to pre-release uh, pre like mentality, which were... You know, if you played Grand Cross before, before even the global version, like the JP version, like when it first came out, it was like, oh my god, this game is like insane. Um, so I think that they want to re like recreate that feeling. Okay. Um, we reviewed the play elements that have become somewhat standardized due to the service continue for a long time, and are preparing to show off the materials that can be played with new goals. I'm assuming they're saying, oh, there's going to be new stuff that we haven't like experienced yet, hopefully. Development of the story that you've been waiting for and so on. I believe that going to be the core development direction in the first half of this year. The one thing that they really got bad at over the years is like re-releasing content. They re-release a lot of stuff, right? Like we've seen like the Chimera boss, Chimera? I don't know, the you know the Pikachu boss. Like those bosses that come from time to time, they come way too often. Like the same one, you know what I mean? For this reason, we're playing to add new growth elements. Growth elements? Oh, no. <laughs> Level 120? No. <laughs> so that uh, can be go to grow characters, and they're playing to play new forms of battle content. This is, this is what I actually want. That can utilize grown characters and new, link, new linked main content. Okay. Along with newly prepared new content, we're playing to regularly update a new season of existing super boss battles. Ooh, nice. This is the final boss for the global players. Monster battles. This one, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's uh, Demonic Beast and uh, Labyrinth. Labyrinth is such a, a missed opportunity. It's a good game mode that they barely update. Like, we've had two real Labyrinths and one for the collab, right? So three. And it's been, like, what? Months. It's been it's since Labyrinth first came out. At least five months. And ex expand uh, play elements that you can play more diverse content. Um... Many people hope that the story of Meliodas and Graco would continue forever, so even after the final chapter of the update, I main story scheduled for the end of this year. Okay, so they're gonna end the story this- wow, this is- I guess chaos does go for a long time. Because, you know, the chapter we're in right now, it ends with Meliodas, you know, um, obtaining true magic. So... From this, there's like the battle with the Demon King almost right after. And then, and then there's the chaos stuff. And the chaos stuff, I'll be honest, I skimmed through on the manga because it was kind of boring. <laughs> uh, the chaos stuff pays off on the new story. Like the, the, the chaos arc, I need to go back and reread because it pays off in Nice the Apocalypse. Uh, it was clearly a setup for Nice the Apocalypse. But, you know, uh, I, I didn't realize it was so long. So I guess towards the end of the year. Continue to, continue to grow through uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Four Nights, the Apocalypse story. I'll do my best to prepare for this year so they can present a new story. So, okay. I, I don't know if the... Tra okay, here's the thing. I don't know if the Google Translate translated this wrong. And he meant the main story schedules to end this year or scheduled for the end of this year. You know what I mean? Like, because those are two different meanings. I'm going to assume that it actually will end like months and months from now. Because there's all the chaos stuff, and they only release new story chapters every two or three months. Um, and they release like a half story chapter, right? So, Nice the Apocalypse. Really excited for that. I think, you know, they're only going to start releasing characters for it once the story actually starts. Which might be after the anime even starts. So, you know, if you don't want to read the manga, you can wait for the anime. This is going to be crazy. The, the characters in Nice the Apocalypse are really cool. In addition, along with the full-scale development of the ongoing original elements of Ragnarok, we're also preparing content for Ragnarok that can be played more easily. So, it's like, okay, guys, we realize demonic beasts are really hard. <laughs> so, 
let's play some other stuff as well. And the characters from Seven Calamities that have not been revealed so far. The story will also be updated as a chapter format. We're playing to introduce new characters for Seven Cat Catastrophes. Uh, characters who will face a new phase. Um, Awaken Shin? Question mark. Okay. We can't tell you the specific targets and the, and the timing for the collaboration event. For of the long-awaited collaboration event, I'm assuming they're talking about the apocalypse, but we're uh, aiming to unveil in the first half of this year. The specific schedule of the content will be announced. Okay. So, you know, I talked about maybe saving for Nice Day Apocalypse, and I, I still think it's true. You, nice Day Apocalypse might be like a shifting point for Grand Cross if they decide to be, where, you know, when festivals started coming out, they really bumped up, like, the gap between characters. And they could do the exact same, because it's, like, a huge... Like, this is, like, a, a whole new IP. The characters that can come from this are just huge, right? Um, not gonna spoil the characters, but, you know, the main character, Percival, and the other, Nice the Apocalypse as well, might be a point where they also decide to do that. I mean, I wouldn't say, like, don't summon until th these characters come out, because that's just stupid. Uh... <laughs> But try not to spend <clears throat> too much gems on banners that aren't high value, because then using on banners like these are much cooler. You're probably gonna really want like Tristan and stuff like that. You know, that's cool. I mean, hopefully we'll get uh, more and more news about it. Unlike on our Origin, where we get like one piece of news every eight months. About the labyrinth. Oh boy, the there's only like uh, okay. It's, uh, it's not that much more. This was, like, the biggest part. Um, we saw a lot of feedback that, uh, from players as content in a new format, but the play pattern was different from what we intended. Such as differences in difficulty due to randomness and as fixed... As a result, fixed character selection were, out, were often used. Yeah, really, <clears throat> there was one strategy for the new Labyrinth because they made the character selection so terrible. Um, the new one, they just... I was say just released, but it released quite a while ago. You know, the characters that were available to us were not very good in the beginning, especially. So, there was really one, only one strategy I saw people, everyone used on Twitter when the, the Labyrinth first came out, which um, which was like Red Nalaskila, Blue Tarmia, all stuff like that. Um, also, there was an opinion that it was disappointing that the structure was not suitable for continuous enjoyment because there was no motivation for the content after. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's like the thing is, it, it's really hard because... I think I I think the first labyrinth was really good because it was <clears throat> it was hard. It was hard and sometimes you actually try multiple times until you finally beat it. This new one was so easy. You do it like first try and then what? There's nothing, right? Internally we're empathizing with player feedback and disappointment the current labyrinth. We're currently working on improving labyrinth. I mean, there's other stuff as well like where's that game mode that they uh the, the goddesses and demons game mode that we fought, the, like, the Monspeed boss. Where is that? You know what I mean? Like, there's other game modes as well. Like, Labyrinth, it's cool that they're working on it, but... I think that they also could, like, branch out and work on the other game modes so we have more stuff going on, right? If Labyrinth is only going to be updated every month and a half or two months... It, it seems like it's two months and a half, actually. They go a month and a half that you can play, and then one month of, like, nothing, and then they release a new one, seems to be the pattern. Um, that whole month that Labyrinth is not on, there should be something else to, like, be there, right? Just having some attention there. Based on players' opinions and improvements as cast, we would like to introduce a reorganized form of Labyrinth in Season 3. Okay. Uh, February, so... This month, essentially, it's 31st of January, so essentially this month. Uh, first of all, we improved the existing configuration, where character growth and passives are all reset if we're defeated. Ooh. We like to adjust the difficulty of continuous challenges by introduced growth. Okay. Interesting. Even if you win, there is a reason to continue playing. In addition, we plan to save the challenge party after clearing the depths and improve it so we can play repeatedly. It's the one thing, I played Hades, like, not so long ago. And it's cool because, you know, you uh, you lose the uh, the abilities when you die, because it's a, it's a roguelike. But you keep some of the improvements, which I think are, are like, there is still, like, 
advancement from continuous play, but you still lose some. I think that that's how it should be. Uh, in addition, uh, there are various, various elements that allow you to capture Labyrinth for using Labyrinth for goods more efficiently, such as the reroll function that allows you to reset passive skills. Good. So sometimes like you just go around with like full garbage passes, and you're like, why am I even playing this? I might as well restart. Uh, and this is a knight's mission. Oh boy, knighthood stuff. We're planning to update knight's order system. They said they said they they uh I think the last one um, that people just don't really care for knight, knighthood boss, like there's like a low clear rate, I think. I mean, they, they showed on like the popularity pool stuff that we did, like knighthood stuff is at the bottom. No one likes knighthood stuff. It's because it's kind of boring. As a base system for knights members to cooperate um, and enjoy, enjoy content together, we'll first update a dedicated mission called Knight's Command. Order is a mission that is given randomly to each knight order member is a cooperative mission in which activity points are distributed towards to all Knight Order members when an individual Knight Order member completes the mission. Okay. Acquired points can be used to purchase item random boxes, yada yada yada. Okay. I mean, this is uh, normal. It's like other games do this where you have a mission and if you do the mission, the whole knighthood, you know, gets a, a cut out of it. Additional systems are content related to knighthood activities will be released. After the update, okay. Regarding operation schedule of the championship match. Currently, the Gracro champion decision match is held irregularly. Due to the system of championship match, we thought it would be exhausting for many players to for a long period of time. Are they talking about top 100? Or, or uh, just the actual tournament? Uh... But we have received opinions that we would like to hold the championship match more uh, more frequently. Considering the degree of fatigue in the championship match, we're considering to plan a shortened period and run the championship match in a faster cycle. Oh, I think they're talking, talking about top 100. The worst thing about top 100, right? <clears throat> As someone that has gone for top 100, is how long it is. You have to place three weeks in a row. It's so annoying. Like, okay, sure. If you get a high placement in the first week, you don't have to worry so much about the following weeks. But you still want to be in the top 100 regardless uh, on the next two weeks. So it's just, it's just exhausting. You're facing the same teams over and over and over again because it's not like the meta changed, right, in, the, in between these three weeks. You're just facing the exact same team, sometimes the exact same people, over and over and over again. It's just terrible. Top 100, I don't ever want to play top 100. I mean, if they make it better, if they make it only one week, I'll play it again. It will be, like, more competitive because I think more people would play as well. But it, playing for, having to place in top 100 three weeks in a row is just too much. You waste so many hours playing the game. That otherwise you didn't you shouldn't have to. Um, but yeah. Regarding the changes, you would like to make a decision after collecting enough opinions. Uh, here my here's my opinion. Yes, make it shorter. Make it shorter. Top 100 is not terrible. I I like the fact that there's no food because I expect to go second every time. And me expecting to go second means that I don't care, right? I can face the biggest whale. I don't care because I'm always gonna go second anyways. And I can form my team around that. I like that. Um, but it's the only place where I can play like that. And it's just very stressful. I also don't like the fact that if you go, you can only play top 100 if you're in challenger. But if you're in challenger, you can't play against real players in the normal playlist. And it's a problem very specific for me because I like recording videos for my video, for my channel. Um, and you can't face real players in challenger. But, you know. Um, we do our best to continue striving to satisfy our players. Nice. Just more talk about Knights of the Apocalypse. That's cool. I mean, I, um, I'm patiently waiting. Again, I think that the, uh, the anime for Knights of the Apocalypse, it's gonna be made by, like, a, a good studio, it seems, for what I heard. So, nice. If they can replicate the animation level of Season 1 of Seven Deadly Sins, I think it will be a a very popular anime on that season that it comes out, uh, whichever season it is. 
especially if there's not as much competition. Like, if it comes out with an anime like Jujutsu Kaisen or something, it's going to be hard, but... You know, if there's not as much competition, I'm pretty sure it would be, like, the number one anime of that season. Because it's really cool. Like, the main character is really cool. Um, like, first episode is going to be... is going to hook people up, for sure. So, yeah, I'm excited for that.